Hey guys, it's Dave Dean here, just doing another quick video. This one is, uh, I'd say it's like a part two of the FIO K3. That's the new FIO K3, or some people like to call it uh, the FIO K3S uh, that came out in 2021 of uh, the August, I believe. Um, so after having it for a little over a week, I found that uh, I was having an issue where if you if you moved it, if you move the piece, sometimes it must have been like having something to do with the power or something of it uh, because it would shut off and then you'd have to hit play again to start the music all up again. Um, this only happened when I was moving the unit. So what I, I'm just I'm just thinking it was probably because of the power cord in there. Um, whatever, because you, you, they're not the power cord, but the cord itself that was going into the um the actual unit right um because obviously it doesn't have anything to, i've tested other stuff before and never had any issues with like the adap uh, camera adapter or any of that kind of stuff so it must have been it must have been the unit moving around somehow it loses its power and that's the problem uh i don't know why these companies don't include like a power something to power it if you're going to have like a something mobile it should actually have a battery in it and you should be able to power it. Like, uh, uh, I don't mind spending an extra 30 bucks or whatever it's going to be to have that. I just have no idea why they don't do that. Um, it would make life so much easier, especially when you're doing anything with, uh, Apple's camera kit. Right. I mean that obviously they're not designing something to work with the camera kit, but they mean they should. Right. Cause a lot of people do use that if they want digital audio. Um, so yeah, I figured I'd do another video, kind of a follow-up video. Because some people, when they do reviews on something, they do the review and then you never hear from it again. Well, what, you know, and I've seen issues like even with uh, products like the Chord, the Chord Mojo or Chord Mojo, however you want to pronounce it, the Mojo, right? The original Mojo. Uh, there was lots of issues with that thing, but nobody ever really, not too many people really talked about it afterwards, right? Um, so I'm not going to be one of those guys that I do a review on something and then I've had it for like after I did the review and uh, there's some issues with it. So there was definitely some issues with that thing. Um, and that was it, right? So if you're going to buy that unit, because it sounded good, it sounded really good um, for the application that I was using it for, right? I wasn't using it for headphones. I was using it specifically to have uh, Apple lossless music uh, going through that unit and then going out through the coaxial out into my DSP. So that's originally why I bought it. Um, and I would have kept it if it wasn't for that. So I actually just returned it today. Uh, but what it's going to be taken over for its place <laughs> is the FIO M11 Plus LTD, not ESS. The LTD is the version I ordered. I know it's a little bit older. It's about six, six seven months older uh, than the ESS version that just came out like a month ago or something, a month or two months ago. Um, but I saw, decided to go with the LTD just after all the research I did, uh, a couple of people had some comments. Uh, the one person had both and he was testing it on his home theater as well on here. So I, I, I valued his opinion and then some other, uh, things that I kind of tracked down online. Very difficult to find people that actually review both of them. Um, it was actually really hard. I've only, I only ran into a few people, but they didn't go head to head with them. It was like they reviewed one, one time. And then they mentioned a couple things about, uh, the old one when they, when they did the new one. Right. Um, and, uh, and a lot of the reviews that I found seem to think the FIO, I mean, they're both great dApps. Don't get me wrong. Right. So I'm not, I'm not saying one's bad or anything like that. They're both great. Right. Both have excellent specs. Um, but the LTD, it kept on coming back to it being a little bit more musical, right? Uh, a little bit better with the high-end details. Uh, a little bit more weight to it, right? Um, the specs are a little bit better on the the new ESS. And, the, and that one's a little bit more powerful. Um, but like I said, I'm not using it for headphones. I'm using it for my vehicle, right? And I was perfectly uh, perfectly fine with the FIO M11 before that I had. It's just that I'm switched to Apple Music. It's cheaper. It's like $9.99 here in Canada. Uh, title's $19.99. I don't know how they can even justify 
1999 anymore. Um, but that's a whole nother video, right? Of what these guys are charging you, uh, to use their products. Right. So, uh, for me, I'm, I'm an Apple guy now that they got lossless. So I was even an Apple guy before when they had iTunes, right? Uh, I still thought it sounded decent iTunes before, uh, but lossless just is to me, uh, yeah, you can, you can talk all day, <laughs> all day and all night about doing comparisons or you can hear the difference if, if you're blindfolded, uh, on some, some stuff I'd say yes on other stuff, maybe not. Right. But, uh, it's, it's in your mind knowing that you have the best quality possible is, is kind of a thing, right? Um, I think that's why a lot of people even buy real expensive things, right? Cause then they know they got the best there is, right? Um, and it's, a, it's in your mind, a lot of that stuff, right? Uh, but yeah, I pulled the trigger today and I should have mine on Sunday. I believe I'm getting it this Sunday. Um, I, like I said, I could have ordered both. Uh, they had the M11 LTD. Uh, it was like 50 bucks off on Amazon right now. They had two left. So I pulled the trigger on that one. I could have ordered the one through the States, the ESS one. I was back and forth. I've been researching it for the last, you know, well, I was did some research a long time ago, but I also did some more research in the last couple of weeks. And um, I figured by phone, I still, I still uh, want to find something that works with the phone too as well. Because I said that what I'm recording on now is my uh, uh, brand new iPhone 13 Pro Max. And I got a 5. I used to have the, the, the stuff that I was recording on before was my file. Or not my file, sorry. My uh, iPhone uh, 12 Pro Max. Um, but that was only 128 gig, one, that one. And this one, because I like to put a lot of music on here. This time I got a 512. I was going to get the one terabyte, but you couldn't find them. And I didn't want to wait like six weeks for it. Uh, so I pulled the trigger on that and I bought uh, outright uh, um, the iPhone 13 Pro Max uh, 512 gig. Uh, so I got plenty of storage on here. Uh, it's pretty much what I had for my uh, micro SD card on my FIO too, is I got the 512 as well. So I kept that when I sold my M11. I kept, uh, I think I got two or three actually uh, cards because originally with the M11, you could use two cards, but it had issues. Um, so I had to quit using both mine. And, uh, so I got a spare one. So I got two 512s. Um, I think that's enough for me. I don't, I don't think I need a terabyte. I mean, you could go, <laughs> even with 512, you could go on a long, long trip, a long, long, uh, you know, road trip for like, you know, weeks and you still wouldn't listen to every single song on there. So, uh, I think that's pretty good for me for the 512. Uh, I already got it. So when I get that one, uh, I'll stick it in there. And then uh, definitely do uh, uh, a really good review on that one. Uh, I'll probably do the unboxing video first, even though a lot of people have seen it. But uh, I'll probably put one an unboxing video, and then I'll do the actual review because I want to spend a good you know few days uh, listening to it to see what it sounds like on its uh, uh, analog outputs and see what it's like on its digital outputs, right? For the uh, actual digital out to see if there's any difference between that one and the M11. Uh, there might be because they, apparently the jitter, uh, is supposed to be even better on that one. Right. Um, I know I was going back and forth between the M17. Um, I just can't, I can't justify the price, um, for what I'm using it for. Right. I'm using it for my V. I mean, I can justify it, but at this point in time, uh, I'm, I'm just going to stick with, uh, uh, the M11 plus, I think it does everything I need it to do. Um, you know, and we'll see, we'll finally see if, uh, what I said before is true, right? Um, if going analog out might sound better than going through coaxial digital, I don't know. You might have to move up to the M17 possibly for that to happen. Uh, who knows, but. I heard lots of great things on Astral and Kern's SB2000, and that was kind of like the benchmark DAP. Um, not sure how the M17 stacks up. The M17 is new, and that thing's like a tank. That thing's like a far bigger um, than the SB2000, right? And then Sony's got their new DAP out too, or it's coming out, one of the two. Uh, that's a $5,000 uh, unit as well. Um, and of course, you know, the F1 status has their, you know, Astle and Kern DAP that was made for the made for their F1 status, right? 
Um, but that's, that's more like a SP 1000 from what I, uh, was reading. Uh, it's kind of like custom to them, but it's kind of like the build of an, uh, the SP 1000, I believe. So yeah, I'm kind of excited. Uh, I figured I'd pop on and do a quick video just to make sure that if anybody does buy that K3, that, uh, just remember if you're going to, if you're going to use that thing, just Velcro it somewhere so it doesn't move, right? Figure out a spot for it and just Velcro it somewhere so you're not, and don't touch the cords. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I, maybe I might have a faulty cord or something like that, but I tried it with two, two different cords and both cords did the exact same results. And, and the weird thing was it wasn't always when I moved it sometimes, it, but that was what was causing it. Right. Um, but it's just weird that sometimes it, was fine like it and then other times it wasn't so i'm thinking it's something to do with like at the power part of it right um that's my guess anyways so it's uh just be aware of that if you're gonna pick uh, pick up one of those things try it out in your in your vehicle and see what you think see if you have the same issue as i did um because like i said i was gonna keep that thing i wasn't i didn't plan on returning it right it was a great price um I like the sound it produced out of the coaxial output um, compared to the other two products that I tested. Uh, the topping was great too. Like, don't get me wrong. The t but the toppings, the topping, it had a ton of potential. You would just have to uh, definitely use your DSP uh, and maneuver some things around with that, right? Because it's a totally different sound signature than everything else. And the K3 or the K3S, uh, the new version, um, that was more to my liking. It, it sounded more like uh, my Fio DAP did. Um, I know, and like on some songs, like I said, it even sounded better on some songs. Uh, I just liked the way the bass was really tight on it. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna see what happens when I get the the new DAP in my system. And, and when I'm doing these uh, like reviews, and, and I know this is just kind of like a part two of that, just kind of pointing out that issue. Uh, but when I'm doing reviews, you got to remember, I have different speakers than you, than most of you. Some of you guys might have audio frog speakers and whatnot. I got Mos Moscone amps. Some of you guys might have like all, you know, hundreds of other different types of amps in your car. Um, so when I do these reviews, these reviews are also based on my system, right? Uh, I got a Helix DSP Ultra. It might sound different if you got a 0.3, but I mean, the general quality of the product uh, when I'm doing the reviews I mean, I got a pretty high-end system, I would say. So if a product sounds good in here, that's why I recommend it. And, and you know, like, it. okay, well, if it sounded good here, it has the potential to sound good in any car, right? So I just wanted to make everybody aware of that because, like I said, I do have, you know, like I said, audio frog speakers in here. And uh, everything sounds different, right? So it might might sound different in your vehicle, uh, compared to mine, because maybe you have different products, different speakers, different uh, amps, um, different chords, different everything, right? Dif different acoustic environment in your vehicle, because every vehicle is different, right? Um, all that kind of stuff, all, all play a major factor into what things somebody's using, what 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 sounds good in one in one car might not sound the same in, a, in another car or even the same car with different components and different amps and different, uh, different everything. Right. So, but I do, I was looking at, uh, uh there was a couple other dApps that are kind of like, we're in that price range. Uh, the I, I Basso 240 looked pretty good. Um, I think it only had Android nine in it. Uh, but that should be okay. Um, but the file has the, the Android 10 in it. And uh, the other gentleman that did that review, or he didn't do a review, but we were talking back and forth in the comments uh, on the Fio M11 uh, Plus LTD and the ESS. He has both of them. And he was saying the screen's a little bit nicer, I guess, on the ESS version. Um, but I'm I'm more of the sound guy. You know what I mean? I already know the DAP's going to look decent because the M11 looked decent, right? And I know it's going to be faster and all that type of thing. But I'm my main concern is like, what is it going to sound like, right? Is it, how good is it going to sound like through analog and how good is it going to sound like through its coaxial digital out, right? So um, we'll find out pretty quick here. It's like Tuesday now. So what do we got? Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So five days. 
um, to go until that shows up. And like I said, I'm pretty excited about that. Um, let's hope, hopefully that's the one that shows up <laughs> and hopefully I don't have like an issue. Like I had last time when I ordered an M11 pro and they sent me an M11, but I kept it anyways, because they didn't have any, they didn't have any more M11 pros at the time. Um, so let's hope they send the right product and then I'll do a, a review on that. So look forward to that next week. Um, that's the most exciting one I'd say, because the other, the other piece of equipment that I were doing were kind of like budget um, budget specialty items, I'd say for what we, what I'm using it for, like the, uh, going out the coaxial digital out of it. Uh, and like I said, I test everything, uh, when I get one of these products, I even tested it through the headphones. Um, everything sounds pretty decent, especially, uh, those three specific products that I did, the file BTA 30, um, the topping D 10 S and then the recent one, the file, uh, K3S or new K3, however you want to look at it. Uh, all of them sounded decent through headphones. I just told you don't, uh, the power of the amp isn't like incredible on the K3 or the K3S. Um, so just be aware of that. But other than that, it was good little, a good little piece, but these companies start, I mean, they have to start putting batteries in these things and come with a charger <laughs> of some sort. Uh, I don't, I don't even think I would even want to, uh, unless it's a dongle, if it's a dongle, that's fine. Right. Uh, if you're looking at like an auto auto quest type dongle, then that's fine. But if you're, you're having a little unit, um, have it battery powered. So at least you don't have to worry about that part of it. Right. You, your, your unit's going to charge itself and then you're not going to have any issues, um, and I think even that, if, if I remember correctly, I think even possibly the topping might have stopped a couple of times too. So it might have something to just do with like the, that Apple camera kit with it. I don't know. I haven't used enough products on that to uh, tell you, but I, I think that did it as well. Um, possibly. That could have... Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Actually, no, I, I think that might have did that too a couple of times, uh, if I remember correctly. Um, but I, with the BTA 30, I didn't, I never had that issue with that for whatever reason. I have no idea why, but uh, never had any problems with that. But yeah, that, that would solve that problem because then you always have the proper voltage going into that thing at all times, right? Uh, with the dongles, I don't think you really need that so much, but I have no, I have no idea because I, I test the only time I ever tested those was earlier on, um, when I was deciding whether I was going to go for an M11 or if I was just going to use, uh, uh, my phone at the time and use, I was actually, I tested out some of the audio quest ones, never did any videos because I wasn't doing any videos at back then. Um, other than the old videos I did with my old system that I just was on there just for something to do right back then. Um, but yeah, so look forward to that one next week. And once again, just a reminder, if you do go with that K3, um, just keep it as still as possible with the cords. <laughs> and then hopefully you should be good on that one. Or maybe it's just, maybe I, maybe I got a faulty uh, uh, camera adapter. I don't know. I don't know if you guys, if you guys use that, uh, the camera adapter from Apple, let me know if you've ever had any, any of those issues with, uh, if you've used it with like a DAC or whatever, um, with things just like stopping right, um, out of the blue and it wasn't consistently, but it happened enough where I was like, okay, this is becoming a problem. Right. And, uh, it's not like, like with my M11, I never had any issues whatsoever, other than the volume wheel, which I never really used anyways, um, just early in the earlier stages when I was testing the analog output of it, um, was the only time I ever even used the analog, uh, uh, volume control on that thing. Um, but that I had issues with <laughs> at the end when I was, uh, going back and testing it again, the thing was, like I said, you would click it and it would go way up, even if you just clicked it once or it would go way down. And it was, you couldn't even get the proper volume to s sit still half the time on that thing, right? So that was the only issue I ever had with that. 
And um, I mean, yeah, on that one, the album artwork would like take a little while to load. I'm hoping they fix that problem with the new one. We'll find out next week uh, because it would be nice since it's on Android 10. I'm assuming they would have fixed that, right? With the uh, the album artwork, like, you know, sometimes it would take a while for it to load in on the M11. So that that would be the only thing. Other than that, even the M11 was like quick enough for me. It's not, it's not like the an iPhone, right? Like a new iPhone these days. Um, but it's quick enough for your music. Um, and the new one should... The new one should be uh, even quicker, I'm, I'm thinking. So we'll find out next week. So that's it for this one, guys. Uh, stay tuned. Uh, I'll be posting uh, uh, probably the unboxing. If I get it Sunday, I'll do the unboxing video on Sunday. Uh, but it'll it'll be a quick unboxing because then I want to get to the actual listening of the music and the important part, like the review of what that sounds like, even compared to my old M11, what it sounds like uh, from the previous products that I've... Uh, tested and uh i'm looking forward to it so we'll see you on the next one guys have a good one